Uh -huh. um, oh, I'm dos mangoes. Uh, dos mangoes? Dos mango. Okay. Um, so this is like the second time today that we've <laughs> bought stuff from one of the boats. The King of Beers. <laughs> I can't believe they have Budweiser. It was only 24 bucks for that. I mean, it's not that bad considering where we are in the middle of nowhere. No, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, we got more milk. We've been ripping through milk um, because we've been eating oatmeal for breakfast, which we never do. We, we go through these phases when we're on anchor, and it makes it so hard. And the times that we walk. haven't really been to a spot um, like this, where it was so deep, so close to shore. Maybe one spot I can think of, um, but certainly not that common. And wow, the water here is super clear. Really like this island. We're cruising the San Blas Islands and discovered this unique spot where the water remains deep up close to the shore. It's beautiful and has that untouched feeling. And though it's remote, it's actually not too remote. The local indigenous even sell beer on the beach and for a very good price too. It's pretty cool. It's like in the Bahamas, it's always so hard to find beers and stuff, but here provisions come to you so easily between the vegetable boat and the guna. It's so clear and beautiful that I'm gonna go for my first snorkel in Sam Lost Waters right now. And I think I'm just gonna swim around this island and see like what's out there. Cause there's reefs that we can see all the way around. So yeah. Uh, dos mangoes? Dos mango. Okay. Um, maybe I'll take another. Should I take some more limes or is that crazy? Pantera. Wine. Oh, yeah, Pantera. Uh, Ten dollars. Let's see. Let's see. Wow, honey. Been a while okay. since you had Budweiser. Okay, Budweiser. Um, Big. Do you have do you have clothes and uh, Cabernet? No Cabernet, no. Uh, only Blanco. Blanco. only sold Vino Blanco. Okay, uh -huh. that's okay. That's okay. So this is like the second time today that we've <laughs> bought stuff from one of the boats. The King of Beers. <laughs> I can't believe they have Budweiser. It was only twenty four bucks for that. I mean, that's not that bad considering where we are in the middle of nowhere. No, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, we got more milk. We've been ripping through milk um, because we've been eating 
oatmeal for breakfast, which we never do. We, we go through these phases when we're on anchor and it makes it so hard to provision because um, we just eat so differently uh, when we're on anchor. It's just, it's truly bizarre. Um, but being a hoarder, I do okay. Um, but yeah, we're still going through a lot more, more milk than I expected. Um, it's so convenient <laughs> having the boats come. It's so different than the Bahamas in that respect. Uh, and most of it's cheap. I mean, the fruit's really cheap. I feel like the mangoes were a lot on that boat. I don't know why, but um, this was this is our basket after this morning's haul. These passion fruits were like five for a dollar. The grapefruits were five for a dollar. The limes, I think, are five for a dollar or ten for a dollar. Um, so yeah, we're we're loaded up. Oops. Just going to shape it a little bit. A nice springy dough, though. That's super hot. We had to er, bend this pan. Yeah, we, mo we modified it. Bandy boy. <laughs> Bandy boy. <laughs> Just took does a nice clamp one. Does it actually like sit flush in there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. cooked it at like half the temperature it's supposed to be because when we provisioned in Boca del Toro, we bought alcohol that was 70% alcohol. Yeah, so 90% Yeah, it's something. like, it's weaker, so our nothing's getting as hot as it should. So this was cooked at like 300 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Max. It works. <laughs> for 40 minutes, and I think it's supposed to cook like a lot quicker. So I had no idea to know whether it was done. Mm. Am I good? I think it's really good. Sweet. I think it's almost be a little saltier, but I think put a little salt on top. Ah. Beautiful. Stealing Dallas Wi-Fi. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> I'm gonna work on a salad now. Watching Taylor's video. So Bill barbecued this half chicken um, earlier today. I am about to make a salad to go with the chicken. Um, so we have something easy to eat on the beach. I'm gonna use just what we have, which I think is just cucumbers and tomatoes, so, and feta. Um, don't mind my hair. <laughs> I'm just, it's drying, and sometimes I dry it this way. So it's like wavy and poofy, and this kind of calms it down. But I'm um, pretty excited for dinner tonight because we have the fresh made focaccia bread. We have this chicken that we bought on the vegetable boat randomly the other day. Um, <laughs> And, but it tastes really good, I tried it. And then, um, yeah, it's a yummy salad. So looking forward to dinner tonight. The veggies I'm using for our salad were inexpensive. And overall, we've been pleasantly surprised by how well-priced food is here. We've spent $150 in the almost three weeks we've been here on fresh produce, booze, and chicken. We did spend 700 to load up in Bocas del Toro beforehand, but some portion of that will last us for months to come. It's a tiny moon. Good eye on the moon, Nug. Wow. Torch. Camera and a torch. Yeah. Okay, two essentials. One more essential than the other. Probably looks good enough for me. A little bit more aggressive than my lighter. <laughs> I found this on the ground, and I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -oh, 
grind and see comments. Yesterday we left to explore a new island and have woken up this morning to a new view. This time we are closer to the mainland and face the mountain range. I like this view spot a lot. It's really cool because we have the mountains kind of behind us and we have like this pretty close to this island right here. We're going to go to the beach today, which we've been doing a lot. Um, okay. I'm showing. We may be in paradise, but as usual, there's a ton of broken stuff. Somehow our dinghy, both tubes, have a slow leak somewhere, which I haven't found yet. I had to fill it up every day, about 20 pumps. We managed to puncture our dinghy wheel. Yeah, like basically. Like immediately. Yeah. Um, we're running on two batteries. We got alcohol that is only 70%, so we could barely cook. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny out here. We're just winning. That's real life. Hot note, are you ready to go to the beach? <laughs> Dingy's pumped up. Yeah, we just need a little bit of a period to get some things fixed, but we don't want to miss a season here in the sand blast, so we're just kind of making do for the next month or so, and then we'll take care of things. Yeah, so we'll show you guys more of how we're making do um, on board. It means no ice machine. Later, we're heading to the beach. Yeah, definitely means no ice. It means adding like an hour to make dinner. Yeah. Because of our- We're uh, slowing down. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful day. Gorgeous. Let's do it. Let's go.
I just wanted to follow up a little bit on the cost we were discussing earlier in this video. Um, obviously we were discussing kind of food cost earlier, but there's some fixed costs associated with cruising. Um, for instance, we have health insurance, boat insurance, and life insurance for about $500 a month. And the most expensive is being the boat insurance, obviously, because we're insured for worldwide right now. Um, we also have communication costs. So we have a cell phone plan for about $60 a month. And right now our Iridium Go is on for $140 a month because Sam Bloss is fairly remote and we want to be able to maintain communication with the outside world in case of emergency or whatever. So we, we do keep the Iridium Go on when we are in remote areas. We also had to buy fuel before we left Bocas del Toro. Um, we spent about $240 on that and we still have plenty of diesel left. We burned about 10 gallons coming out here. Uh, so we have another 48 or so, so we're in good shape with that. <laughs> Funny enough, both being CPAs, but one of the hardest thing we find in budgeting is the boat expense. Um, it's so wildly variable and gear can be so expensive. So it's really hard to estimate what's gonna break and what's gonna require an expensive repair. So obviously in those figures, we didn't include any boat repair because that's a challenge. Um, but if you think about, if you just talk about the things that are kind of easier to estimate, the food, obviously, I think we've been here three weeks, it was 150, we'll definitely be spending, well, we left with 900 from Bocas del Toro, that's all we could get out. Yeah, it's hard to get money out of Bocas del Toro, yeah. they're often out of cash. So we'll probably spend another few hundred on food in the next month and a half. Yeah, so the total here. experience probably won't cost us more than like... 1500 or 2000 for the two or three months we're out here, which is pretty good. Yeah, because we're going to buy, we got some molas, those are like 30 bucks each. Um, but yeah, it's one of the cheapest places I think we've ever cruised. Yeah, so I mean, what do you guys think? Is that what you expected we would be spending a month? Or what do you think it would cost to cruise a remote area like this? Uh, leave a comment, let us know. Yes.